Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Second Sight. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with the protagonist's voiceover, saying that we meet certain people because of our karma. Regardless of whatever a person has done to others, they must pay the debts for their actions. In his case, his psychic abilities allow him to see the karma of others. His mom even beats him for saying he saw how she would fall to her death from the balcony. He watches as his mom falls off the balcony, trying to prove that it's not her karma. However, despite his abilities, he can never see his karmic debts. No matter what he does, he can never stop or change the karma of others. The scene then shows the grown-up protagonist, Jet. He works as a lawyer and faces the jury one last time before returning to his client, a suspect in the rape and murder of a student. The judge clears the case, indicating that Jet wins another criminal case. After the trial, the client hands him cash to thank him for winning his case. However, after seeing the student's ghost standing beside them, Jet advises his client that he will not get away from his karma, even though he can get away from his legal case. Later that night, while driving home, Jet calls his girlfriend, Jung, when his client suddenly shows up beside him. A girl is pleasing him while he's driving, but he's unaware of the student's ghost in between his legs. The client drives past Jet, and Jum tells him she wants to get married, but Jet suddenly sees a vision of a car accident involving him. So he maneuvers his car away, causing the taxi beside him to crash instead, and fall off the bridge. Later, Jet arrives home to find Jum writing another song. He gives him a rose, but she ignores that and shares how worried she is after hearing the news. Jet assures her that accidents cannot harm him. He then lets her play the piano, while comforting her using his tongue. The following day, Jet arrives at the office, where he sees his co-workers watching the report about the accident last night. A car cross got a taxi, causing it to hit the would-be groom and bride, the wedding photographer, and Jet's latest client, killing them all. At office, a female colleague informs Jet that their boss wants him to take the case of the car accident while flaunting her breasts. Jet sees a man behind his colleague shooting his brains out, indicating he's a ghost and the colleague's karma. Jet ignores that, so she says their client is the daughter of the known petroleum company in the country, Cutie, who is a minor at age 16. Jet holds the crime photos, only to see a woman's ghost wrapping her hands around Cutie's eyes and stomping on the gas, causing the accident. Later, Jet arrives at the hospital, where he meets his new client, Cutie, who's presumed to have caused the accident, but she barely has any bruises. Cutie demands to return to her condo, but Jet refuses. He instructs the two nurses to get more bandages and explains to Cutie that the reporters will make it harder for her to escape jail if they see her with minor bruises. Later, the reporters capture many pictures of Cutie wrapped in bandages. Afterward, Jet tells her he can see things ordinary people can't see. Jet then adds that there's a ghost in her room, but Cutie cannot see the dead wedding photographer on her footbed, taking pictures. Later that day, Jet arrives home to jump. She's worried after seeing the crime photos and realizing that Jet has taken the case. Jet assures her he can handle it and tries to be intimate when a call from Cutie interrupts them. She's in a panic, asking Jet to help her because of the ghosts. Jet rushes to the hospital with Jum, only to find Cutie lying on her bed, indicating that she's pranking him for scaring her. So Jum storms off in anger. Jet offers to drive Jum home instead of apologizing, so Jum goes home alone. Later that night, Cutie cannot sleep after learning that three of the dead from the accident are after her. Cutie wants to see them, so Jet tells her to bend down and look between her legs. Cutie does as is instructed, only to be scared by Jet. He then tells her not to wish to see the dead, as it's a curse rather than a gift. Hours pass, and Cutie still cannot sleep, so she scares Jet, standing over the balcony. However, a ghost faces her instead, followed by the three dead people from the accident surrounding her. She tries to leave, but they pin her down to the bed. She repeatedly calls for Jet as he's in the hallway getting coffee, but he cannot hear her. The ghost then pushed the bed near the balcony and tilted it to push her over. Fortunately, Jet arrives at the rescue and carries her off the bed as it falls to the ground. The following day, Jet protects Cutie as a horde of media and the victim's families corner them outside the hospital. Later that day, Jet takes Cutie to a temple, where she follows his advice to buy coffins for the accident victims. It doesn't guarantee they will stop following her, but it's a start. They then talk to a monk, who gives Cutie a rosary bracelet to protect herself from evil and ghosts. After that, they go at Cutie's place, where she takes a selfie with an asleep jet. He wakes up after hearing the clicks and looks at her like she reminds him of someone. Cutie notices this when they meet and teases him that it's a guy thing that a girl may remind them of their past girlfriend. She then flirts with him, but he already has jump. Jet leaves after seeing she's not scared anymore. 
Meanwhile, Jum is in the middle of finishing her song, when something unseen starts playing the piano. She backs away in fear and shock, but stumbles after seeing a woman's reflection on her piano. Not long after, Jet arrives home and finds Jum still crying in fear. Jet takes her to a nearby coffee shop to calm her down, but he pisses her off after refusing to believe her and claims it's a bad nightmare. So Jum storms off after seeing a picture of Cutie and Jet on the call. Jet walks after her and holds her wrist when he sees a vision of himself holding Jum's head to keep her in the water. Jet loses consciousness after that and wakes up in the hospital. The doctor informs him that it's because of too much pressure from work, so he advises him to rest. Jet then comforts Jum, explaining that Cutie is a client and a child. However, Jum wants him to withdraw from the case to continue their relationship. The following day, Jet informs his colleague that he wants to withdraw from the case. Although confused, she tells him the police want him back at the crime scene, as they have found another body. So Jet comes to the detective, who wants to see Jet lose the case and Cutie to be put behind bars. Despite seeing a snake around the detective's neck, Jet warns him not to eat any more snakes as they are cursed animals. However, the detective refuses to listen, so Jet excuses himself as he needs to see Cutie's car during the accident. They wait for the elevator, but Jet doesn't get in and lies to the detective that he prefers to walk down the stairs. However, as the door closes, the lights flicker and the detective's karma starts coming after him. Jet smirks as he hears the detective's duck screams, knowing that eating snakes is finally getting back at him. After that, Jet goes to the parking lot, where they keep vehicles from the crime scenes. While looking for Cutie's car, Jet feels that someone is behind him. However, he doesn't pay much attention and finds Cutie's car instead. He gets into the driver's seat and sees a vision of the woman who has caused Cutie to lose control of her vehicle. However, she soon uses herself to protect Cutie. That's why the accident only caused some tiny bruises on Cutie. After that, Jet meets Cutie in a coffee shop, where he shares his ability and how he uses it to win most of his cases. Jet then convinces her to let him hold her hand to know why the ghost is after her. But all Jet sees are the three ghosts that died in the accident. His headache worsens as he realizes that the ghost will not let him see through. He insists on holding her hand again, but Cutie refuses as he already has a severe headache. Unbeknownst to them, Jum witnesses everything through the window, and it's already too late when Jet sees her. Jum arrives home brokenhearted, believing that Jet's cheating on her. She cries her pains out in the shower. As thoughts fill her head, something unseen opens the door, and the sound of someone wet walking is heard on the floor. Jum turns around as she feels eerie, but she freaks out after seeing blood dripping from the shower, instead water. She screams as the shower gets filled with blood, but a creepy eye in the drain peeps at her naked body. Jum manages to get out of the shower and tries to contact Jet, but he's out of reach. Shortly after, Jet arrives home, and Jum tells her about the woman's ghost. Jet takes her to the river down the bridge and asks her to trust him as he will do something to save her from death. Jet pushes her head into the water, fulfilling his vision and causing Jum to see the woman's face underwater. Jet calls the police and tells them to come to the crime scene as they will find another body. Meanwhile, Cutie is back in her condo. She gets bored and watches the TV when it stops at a scene on the bridge where the wedding photographer instructs the would-be groom and bride on what to do. She tries to turn it off, but the scene still plays, so she unplugs the television. However, it suddenly turns on and torments her by repeatedly playing the victim's last moments until her car crashes over to them. Cutie screams after seeing the dead photographer before her and the couple on her sides. They seal their marriage with a kiss, frightening Cutie even more. Not long after, Jet arrives to check on Cutie and finds her in the middle of the dead couple. Cutie loses consciousness as soon as Jet touches her, so he takes her to his car until she wakes up. She suggests going to jail as the ghosts might leave her in peace. However, Jet will not let that happen, so he takes her back to the temple and asks the monks permission to use the back room where they keep the coffins and where Cutie will apologize to the dead. Jet puts her in an empty coffin, where someone locks her hands and grabs her by the neck, while the dead photographer takes a picture and the dead couple stares at her. Cutie screams like a goose, asking Jet to help her, but he remains seated and guards the coffin. Cutie switches from getting choked to screaming until she finally apologizes and asks for their forgiveness. They vanish after hearing her heartfelt apology. However, the woman who caused Cutie to crash into those people appears suddenly, causing her to scream again. After a while, Cutie calms down as the woman hugs her, and Jet finds her smiling when he removes the cover. Cutie informs him that the woman is her mother. Outside the temple, Cutie shares that she returned to Thailand to discover her true identity because she knew she was adopted. However, it still bothers her that her mother has to hurt her, but Jet explains her mother only wanted to be close to her. 
After that, Jet returns to Cutie's home, where their smelly lips almost meet when the door suddenly slams shut. Jet takes that as a cue to leave and go to the crime scene to meet the police. Truth be told, they find another body underwater, but there's still one missing. The divers also find a camera and computer with a memory card inside. The detective teases Jet that his client will not get away this time, but Jet sees something on the side that shocks him to his core. He instructs the detective to tell his divers to go underwater again before leaving and returning home. He fetches Jum from upstairs and embraces her tightly like she's a porcelain glass. Although confused, Jum comes with him and arrives at the crime scene soon. Jet tells her to wait in the car while he talks to the police. Suddenly, water starts filling the car. Jet comes to save her as he sees this happen. Jet takes her to the water and puts her head under again. Meanwhile, the police retrieve the data from the camera and computer and find the recorded video of the last moment of the couple before the accident. The flashback reveals that Jum witnesses the couple on the bridge, and that's why she tells Jet that she wants to get married over the phone. However, Cutie's car comes crashing into them, killing the couple, their wedding photographer, and Jum. Jum breaks into tears as she realizes that she has been dead. Neither of them knows why Cutie's mother killed her, but Jet knows that she needs to go where she belongs and leave him. Jet cries as he realizes that he's been living with his dead girlfriend since the accident. Meanwhile, Cutie wakes up from the continuous banging on her door. She looks through the peephole but finds no one there. However, the door keeps banging, so she finally opens it. At this time, Cutie's mother whispers into Jet's ears that he needs to save Cutie. So Jet rushes to Cutie's condo, only to find it empty. However, he finds wet footsteps on the floor and follows them to the rooftop where he sees Cutie on edge. She's emotionally unstable, forcing Jet to choose between her and Jum. Jet has no choice but to choose Cutie and says he loves her to save her. But then, Cutie speaks in Jum's voice, indicating that Jum has possessed her. Jum tells him she's taking revenge on the one that tore them apart before letting Cutie's body fall off, but Jet holds her wrist before she can die. This prompts him to see the past when he is with Cutie's mother, Gift, who has gotten pregnant with Jet's child. However, Jet doesn't want a child and starts cheating on her with her best friend, Jum. Gift discovers this and decides to be a single mother, but she dies giving birth to Cutie. It's revealed that she manipulated her daughter to kill Jum while trying to protect Cutie. The scene returns to the present, where Jet breaks Jum's heart again by saying he still loves Gift, especially their daughter. Seeing Gift before him, Jet chooses to save his daughter's life and pulls her back to the top, causing him to fall from the building. The film ends with Jet on the ground with his blood spreading on the cold floor, while his voiceover plays, saying that he's finally paying his karmic debts. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.